Okay, so this is a response video to actually a comment in one of my videos. It was uh, somebody claiming I was being a little bit cold-hearted toward the homeless couple that had the RV breakdown in uh, North Portland. And uh, because I just did a video, kind of uh, explained a little sympathy to their situation, but didn't take them in. Okay, this is a neighborhood that I used to live in. Um, where a lot of these houses are actually apartment buildings in disguise. These are multiple unit dwellings, these aren't mansions. A couple of these are kind of single family large homes, but for the most part, this is one of the more hip neighborhoods. Um, for example, this place right here is kind of a really neat uh, bike uh, collective thing. That's it's basically a commune that owns, lives, and has a business there. They've been around for a long time. Uh, we could call them successful because of it. Uh, some of these other places are, are basically student rentals uh, and room rentals in places where uh, the people stayed on full time. You know, so like here you see multiple satellite dishes. That's because there's multiple residents in that place. That's not just not a single family home. Uh, the history of this neighborhood goes back to Portland's shipping days because a lot of the ship captains would own one of these homes. And then some of the crew members would live there, and then sometimes the ship captain's family lived in a home if it was a single family setup. So, so these are big places. I, I do work with some of the remodels on these, not these in particular, but it's, it's kind of a, a warming up real estate market right now. Okay, so on to the subject of my video is um, we also have uh, some homeless people here, okay? And by coordinating uh, community activism and, and good relations in general, we've been able to have really not all that big of problems with those people. Uh, really not a big problem. Uh, they they, they uh, are basically paid to behave, is, is what happens. Uh, there's a fair amount of uh, generosity. Oh, hi, sorry, excuse me. You know, cans of bottles get left out and then kind of turn those in and, and get something out of them. Uh, over here on the corner at 20th and Ankeny is a house that I used to live in. Uh, I, I was in a room rental situation at that place. And um, we had a really good relationship with the local homeless. One of the issues that came up with taking people in, especially during the, uh, the, the blizzard of 08, when this whole area was just full of snow, was that uh, a few things came up. One of the other residents in the house, real nice guy, unfortunately for him, his past history was that he had spent most of his adult life in prison. And he became a Christian in prison, he cleaned himself up, uh, he was close to 50 years old, uh, and was going to church three days a week, and you know, wanted to be one of those give back to society type situations. So when the weather got bad, he would, um, and I, I got in on it too, you know, we took in homeless people. One of the problems that happens in any economic refugee situation, and will happen when somebody's been living really rough for an extended period of time, is that they're going to have issues with... Um, that whole outdoor lifestyle. All right, we're not talking about somebody who just went camping. We're talking about somebody who's been living homeless for a while. Now they used to hang out. This was before this got re-landscaped. This has been painted and remodeled, really set up nicely. Uh, kind of a historic house. Uh, some Russian people, I think, ended up buying it and remodeling it. But uh, they used to hang out here, and for a pack of cigarettes a, a month, maybe, or maybe. Some of the real cheap $2 a pack cigarettes, I give those away. Uh, I, I would get security on my vehicles, okay? Uh, I'd give away some cigarettes, and they, they'd sit there and watch my vehicles all day. They were perfectly happy with it. We didn't kick them out. I, I paid them cigarettes, and if somebody was snooping around my stuff, they got heavily harassed by homeless people. Uh, there's some people from a certain government agency who might... Uh, wonder why they were getting harassed by homeless people so much if they're out here doing surveillance. Well, <laughs> cost me some cigarettes is how that worked, guys. So the problem is that taking the people into the house without a system of quarantine meant that they introduced bed bugs and parasites into the house. That was part of the reason why the house got remodeled. 
was um, we, we had to have it fumigated, then we had to evacuate because they had bed bugs in their bedding. Now a bed bug is a type of tick, basically. And a way that ticks normally work in the wild is they attach themselves to you and they fill themselves full of blood and they fall off. Other times they just want to hang out and they'll fill a pouch full of blood um, and they'll transfer diseases to you and they'll just stay there until you pick them out, okay? Now what happens with a bed bug is bed bugs are a little bit smarter than a common tick. What a bed bug will do is he'll wait until you're not moving because he can kind of tell what your blood rate is and your pulse rate is as you're in bed sleeping. The bed bug will then fill their body with blood, crawl away, spit that blood out in some little crevasse somewhere in a mattress usually or the bedding, and then feed off of that for a few days. And then they lay their eggs in a small pool of your blood, um, the, the microscopic offspring will live in that stuff for a little while and then at their own convenience while you're sleeping is they'll come out and they'll suck some of your blood and then spit it out in the bedding and that's why when you look for bed bugs you you pull the mattresses back apart and you um, you look for the blood deposits is is basically how you do it you may find the live bugs you may not uh, but you will find the blood deposits in the bedding that was a consequence of bringing homeless people into the house. Part of the reason we had to move out and then the whole place got remodeled and fixed up the way it is now. Um, so at this stage in the game, the neighborhood still has a relatively good relationship with the homeless, very low crime. Um, there, there had been a lot of incidents of uh, car burglaries, went way down. I mean, it's a very relaxed, very low crime neighborhood at this stage. Uh, here you'll see uh, gardening in a front yard and people would be, you know, not particularly possessive of the results of the gardening. Although, you know, it's uncool to go up with a shopping bag and start grabbing stuff out of somebody else's garden. It's just not the end of the world if somebody grabs a tomato or something like that. And then we got, of course, the bicycle commuters. And this is considered one of the more hip and desirable neighborhoods here. Uh, some of the houses are obviously still older but a lot of them are getting fixed up and uh, trade for a lot of money. But part of our problem had been, you know, there's a big difference between helping the homeless out and taking them in, especially taking them in on very short notice without a quarantine situation. And I have to say that you really need to avoid that. And in a shit hit the fan situation where you don't have the means to run a proper quarantine, you, you really need to avoid it. I mean, you give things out, you could designate a little spot, you know, you could say, hey, it's okay to camp over here. We really can't have new people in the safe zone, in the house, until they've gone through a not only a quarantine where you clean everything, but a quarantine where they stay separate for a while, you determine what their medical situation may be, uh, any parasite situation in their baggage and stuff like that. And then everything's got to circulate through getting cleaned. So, no, I'm not a cold-hearted, evil person for not taking in the homeless. Uh, what it is, is I'm a person with experience doing it and realize that, hey, it's not going to work. So this guy who had done 20 years in prison and uh, had apparently, you know, developed a real heart of gold over it, I was taking in the homeless people. It was really... Uh, uh, no fault of his as a human being that it became one of our big problems, but it became the source of our problem. And based on that experience, that's why I have to advise against taking in somebody who's been homeless, uh, especially if they've been sleeping outdoors uh, for any length of time. Uh, you really need to avoid it. And if you do it, you need to circulate their living situation through a quarantine, which is very difficult to do in a city. Now, at rural retreats, you can circulate those things through a quarantine by having a separate building, a separate tent, uh, some kind of a quarantine area where you, you wash all their stuff. Um, there's a church right down the street where they, they would coordinate a, uh, a homeless laundry day. That's not just for the benefit of the homeless, that's for the benefit of the community to get everything cleaned up, okay? So, you know, providing a laundry service is a beneficial thing, providing food, uh, providing some basics so they avoid stealing. 
Uh, here, somebody's doing what's basically one of the traditional open gardens here in Portland. Those are legal here. I know they're not legal in some other cities and some other states. They're legal and encouraged here. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd show the old neighborhood and use this as a backdrop for the narrative on why, um, no, I, I don't take in the homeless. I, I will help some people out here and there, but they're, they're taking them into your situation or your place is unsafe, uh, especially if it's been, and it's not based on financial status, it's, it's based on whether or not somebody's been, you know, sleeping outdoors for the last several months, or congregating in places where other people may have parasites and diseases. And if they're living in a particularly filthy, unclean RV, well, guess what, you know, that's part of the problem, that's part of the risk involved with that. And in a situation of diminished resources, it's a risk which you, A, need to avoid, and B, it's a risk which is irresponsible to assume on behalf of the other people who are already with you. So uh, let that be a lesson. It, it, I'll try and post this as a response video in one of my other videos, but this is mainly to the people who are critical of me for not taking in that uh, couple whose uh, RV had broken down on them and uh, we're moving into shopping carts. I'm, I'm sorry to see it, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to sacrifice my own safety to help somebody out in that sort of a situation.